Hi, this is Jay Fleming, the senior developer with Lulea Media and the author of the Child Theme Configurator. If you are using Child Theme Configurator and you already have an existing child theme, either that you've created or that you've purchased or whatever, the procedure is a little bit different because you want to preserve the child theme's styles as best you can without getting in their way, but you also want to be able to customize it. So that creates a set of challenges that we've addressed in version 2.0. You have a couple of new options now. To illustrate this, we're going to go into the Child Theme Configurator and we're going to select this Configure an Existing Child Theme option and we're going to select this 2013 black and white. And what this is, it's actually a child theme that was created. It's in the WordPress repository, but it was created for the 2013 theme and you know, you can you can use it. We're going to select that and then we're going to analyze it. And what you're going to see when the analyzer comes back is it's going to give you this notice that says this child theme has not been configured for this plugin. I wouldn't get too worried about that. All it's doing is it's saying, hey, you know, you already have a child theme. You have some options. So what we've done is we've added this new option down here to select where you save new styles. You can actually select a separate style sheet now so that it leaves the primary style sheet untouched. And it also uses the existing child theme style sheet as the baseline as if it were the parent theme. Okay, and this is completely new in 2.0. So what, it, what it's going to do is it's going to load the parent theme styles and then it's going to load the child theme primary styles and use those as the baseline or parent styles. And then it's going to let you write your new styles to a separate style sheet. Okay, this is also useful if you're using a framework like Genesis where you have an existing uh, child theme already set up and you just want to be able to customize on top of that. So now you can choose the separate style sheet option. You can see it's also selected do not add any parent style sheet handling because the child theme is already doing that for you. You don't need the child theme configurator to add any more actions or any more code to do that. So if we configure now, you're going to see that now you're baseline styles actually include the child theme style sheet as well as the parent theme style sheet. And the child styles are now using a pretty much a blank style sheet. That's why you don't see the header information like you normally would. But if you use your uh, query selector, you're going to see all your styles are there. And if we customize something, let's say this one, you're going to see it's writing to this new style sheet. So let's look at this in the preview so you can see what's happening. You can see it's this black and white theme. All the styles for the child theme are already in place. We can do this frame, view frame source, and actually look at what it's doing here. So this child theme's already got a link set up for the parent and for the child. Okay, so child theme configurator didn't have to do anything. However, child theme configurator added this new link child theme config separate CSS, which is another layer on top that's going to create override styles to the existing black and white style sheet. So what we've done is just give you a way to customize an existing child theme that we couldn't do before. So you might think of this as a grandchild theme, although I don't really like that term because you can't really make a child theme of a child theme. However, we've made it so that using child theme configurator you can customize an existing child theme uh, in a way you couldn't do before. But now you have a new problem with pre-existing child themes in that one of the whole reasons why we create child themes in the first place is to have a way to customize the theme that won't get overwritten when we update the parent theme. And if you have a pre-existing child theme like this uh, black and white that you got off the repository, as soon as you update that, then you're right back in the same boat again and you lose all of your changes including the new style sheet that Child Theme Configurator created. So to work around that problem we have the ability to duplicate a child theme. We're going to select the duplicate an existing child theme option and select our 2013 black and white child theme, analyze it. Now this is going to come back and tell you that it's okay uh, it, you don't have the warning that you had with the configure existing child theme because it knows you're making a duplicate. And it also gives you the option to edit the child theme directory like it would if it were a new, brand new child theme. Um, 
we're just going to leave this at the default, which is 2013 child. We're going to leave, we're going to keep it at separate style sheet so that we can leave the original 2013 black and white style sheet alone. And uh, we're going to leave do not add any parent style sheet handling because the child theme code is handling that. Go ahead. Oh, and another thing is that when you duplicate a child theme, it copies all of the original files, the functions file, the styles.css, and any templates um, that you, in any other style sheets. Basically, anything that exists in that directory is going to be copied over, including any of the database uh, customizer options, um, uh, the menus, the widgets, anything like that automatically will get ported to the new theme. So let's go ahead and duplicate this. And it's going to come back, and we're going to preview it. And you'll see that it is exactly the same as the other black and white. The only difference is that it resides in a new directory. And now if you were to go and update this 2013 black and white theme from the repository, it would update the original instance of that child theme and leave your new version untouched. So you would have to still manually port those changes over. Um, there's really no easy way around that but at least it gets you out of the problem where it gets completely overwritten. We also added a new option to reset an existing child theme. Whenever a child theme configurator creates a new style sheet, it creates a backup of the original. It's going to roll back the original, and it'll also remove any of the auto-generated code from the functions file. So a reset is basically just a way to back out of a child theme that you may have configured incorrectly, or you just change your mind. So that's available for you as well. One other thing that we've added, in addition to the separate style sheet option, is the ability to ignore the parent style sheet altogether. And that means don't even load it into the configurator. And the reason we added this option is because some framework child themes actually are completely self-contained, and all of the styles exist in the child theme. It doesn't even inherit anything from the parent theme. It happens a lot with a lot of Genesis child themes. So if you want it to completely ignore the parent style sheet, you can check that box and it'll take the parent style sheet completely out of the mix. Don't use that option, however, unless you know that's what you want to do because you won't get any of the parent styles and you'll probably end up with a really sort of generic looking theme. Hopefully a lot of these improvements that we've made with 2.0 will clear up a lot of the confusion that we've had with some of the users, especially with third-party commercial themes, you'll find that Child Theme Configurator is a lot more compatible with third-party themes than it was in the past. Well, that's about it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, uh, go to laleamedia.com slash contact. And you can fill out our contact form, attach any screenshots that you may have, ask any questions, and we'll try to answer it as best we can. We look forward to hearing from you, and thanks for watching.